my hands, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy just thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy thinking about what he's done for me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to Midweek Bible Class here at the Maple Avenue Church of Christ. We're so glad to have you. I'm your teacher for today. My name is Brother Johnson, and we are on a series this month for the next several weeks or so at least entitled The Cost to Abide. Before we get into it, we want you to go ahead and hit that share button, hit that love button, hit that like button. But we want you to share this most of all. Share this with your friends, share this with your family, share this with your cousin, your nieces, your aunts, your uncles. Right. Send it through Facebook Messenger. Uh, share it in a text message. Share it in an email. If you don't got Internet, pick up the phone and call somebody. Right. We want you to share this. We want everybody to be able to come to Bible class and have a good time and enjoy this. Uh, God has opened up so many doors for us to be able to worship online. And it's, it's just a great thing now to do this and be able to share with people who are not even in the same state, may not even be in the same region. So make sure that we share this before we move any further. Amen. We're talking about the cost to abide. This is going to be part two. But before we get into it, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We love you. We worship you. And Lord, we ask that as we go into our Bible class today, that we can extrapolate and pull out the things that we need to apply to our lives. Father, be with us today. Open our minds and our hearts to receive your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The cost to abide. This is part two. When I came to you all before, we were talking about the cost to abide. And we were in John chapter 15. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. My father is the gardener. We talked about how it is uh, difficult to abide because God is pruning. God is cutting. And sometimes that's painful when you have to lose things and lose people or lose ways or lose habits. Amen. And so... We, we dealt with that, but we also looked at how Jesus says, outside of me, you can do anything. You can't do anything outside of Christ, right? You can't do anything outside of Christ. And so we're talking about the cost to abide today. This is part two. All right, let's get into this. It's going to be a good one. Y'all ready? I'm ready. And so today what we'll be looking at is what, what happens when I leave, right? Because I know we, when we talk about abide, it means to remain, to be steadfast, to be unmovable, to be obedient. But sometimes that's difficult. Let's just be honest. Sometimes it's difficult to remain in Christ. Sometimes it's difficult to wait on the Lord. And sometimes we leave. Sometimes we do our own thing. So I want to talk about today what happens when I leave. Let's go over to John. I mean, excuse me, Luke chapter 15. We'll look at verses 11 through 16. Luke chapter 15. We're looking at verses 11 through 16. The Bible says, Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. And after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the land, in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Cost to abide. Part two. What happens when I leave? What happens when I leave? And that's just, this is the question that I want to. I really want to dive into today and spend some time on because sometimes um, it's hard to abide. When I have to abide in Christ, I understand that I am in Christ and I'm doing this for Christ and I'm doing this for the kingdom. But it's hard to stay where I am. Right. Let's just be real on today. Sometimes it's hard to remain in that church that you go to. It's too much drama, It's too much confusion, too much chaos. Sometimes it's hard to remain in that relationship that you're in. There's no understanding. There's no love. There's no compassion. It's hard to remain in this in this job, in this field, in this career that I'm in because there's no upward growth. So I, I want I'm starting to consider now leaving. I'm, I'm starting to consider now going elsewhere. But to keep the main thing, the main thing, what happens when I leave Christ? That's what we're talking about today. What happens when I leave Christ? Because see, Satan, Satan wants you to put down your faith. 
Satan wants you to say, you know what? I'm just done with this church stuff. I'm done. I'm done with it because this the, God's not in this. I can worship all on my own. I can worship at home. And then slowly but surely you start to backslide. You stop watching worship. You stop reaching out. Right. You stop being faithful. You stop reading the word. So what happens when I leave? Because the truth of the matter is sometimes it's just hard to stay. And so one thing we can point out from this lesson today is the first thing we see in the prodigal son, because this is a lesson about the prodigal son. He was eager to leave. And in this time, traditionally, he was the youngest son. So uh, by right, the older son should have got his inheritance first. But the youngest son got his inheritance first. That's really not how that goes. He was eager. So this shows that he was eager and he was impatient. Right. And uh, what I want to point out today is when you're eager for change, you can become impatient. When you're ready for change to happen, you can become impatient. When you're tired of repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, you can become impatient. But I'm here to tell you today that lack of patience never yields the results that you want. So when you get impatient, remember that your lack of patience won't bring you the results any quicker. Sometimes I think because we feel like we have been here so long, we feel like we've been through this, we feel like we've done this, I know a better way. You're not exercising patience though. You're exercising impatience. You're exercising eagerness. And I'm, and I'm almost certain today and I'm pretty sure some people on here can attest to this. Every time in your life that you've moved too soon, you messed it up. You messed it up. And so you don't want to mess it up. You want to be right on time. So when you, when you abide in Christ, you have to learn how to exercise some patience. Because it doesn't always come when you want it, but it's always going to be on time in Christ Jesus. You've got to learn how to exercise some patience. That's the first thing we see. Um, second thing we see is, number one, God will allow you to have what you want to show you what you need. I'm going to repeat that again. God will allow you to have what you want just so he can show you what you need. You see, if we go back to the text, let's go back to the text. Let's go back to the text. When you go back to the text, the Bible says, not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and he squandered his wealth and wild living. Spent everything. And then there was a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in need. But, what, but before we get to that point, I want you to put a pin there. Before we get to that point, I said God will allow you to have what you want to show you what you need. The young man's father didn't argue with his son, but he granted his request. Right. Sometimes God will let you get everything that you think you want just to show you if you had have just waited on me, I would have provided it in a bigger, better blessing than what you have right now. It would have been sustainable. We want sustainable blessings, not quick blessings. And that's what I want us to shift our head and our minds and our thinking on, because sometimes we want quick blessings. We want instant blessings, instant gratification. But I want a sustainable blessing, meaning I want my blessing to last a while. I don't want my blessing to come and then go. I want my blessing to be able to stand the test of time. And that's the kind of God we serve when we can wait on him. When he blesses you, it'll be able to stick around for a while. Y'all say amen when you can. But he didn't argue with his son. He gave his son what he wanted. Because God knows that outside of him, nothing better exists. God knows that outside of him, you can't do nothing like we talked about in the last lesson. But we have a hard time understanding that. The Bible says that before he knew it, the younger son spent all of his money and he was broke. Outside of God, you can't get anything. Outside of God, the blessings don't last long. Outside of Christ, there is very limited access to resources. Sometimes we underestimate or we undervalue just all of the resources that we have in Christ. Christ sends you a blessing out of nowhere. He sends you help out of nowhere. And we get so used to it. 
But I'm here to tell you, when you leave, you will figure out just how scarce those blessings are and how limited those resources are. People are fighting and scrapping every single day just to make ends meet. But because you are a child of God, he delivers blessings right to your door. I'm here to tell you that outside of Christ, it's hard out here. I don't know. I don't know where y'all live and I don't know. I don't know the inflation rates in your area. But outside of Christ, it's tough. People are having a hard time making ends meet. People are having a hard time paying the bills. Right. Just surviving on a day to day basis outside of Christ. There are very limited resources. And what the prodigal son realized that once he spent all his money, then it was a famine. So he spent all his money and he had no food. And so what did he do? Let's go back to the text. Let's go back to the text. The Bible says, so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. Now he's feeding pigs. He's royalty, though, but he's feeding pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with what the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything. OK, so let's, let's go back. So not only. Um. And outside of Christ is resources limited. But outside of Christ, you're going to take less than what you deserve. And somebody is watching this today and you're taking less than what you deserve because you chose to go outside of Christ instead of abiding in Christ. We're talking about today. What happens when I leave? Well, I'm telling you what happens when you leave is resources become scarce. Money becomes scarce. Times get hard and you will take less than what you deserve, because you won't have any other option. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. The Bible says, excuse me, before I go back to the Bible, I got I to get this point out. I got to get this point out. How long will you accept less than what you deserve? And it's just a question that I want to pose to the class today. How long will you accept less than what you deserve? What happens when I don't abide, Brother Johnson? What happens when I leave? You get less than what you deserve. You become in want. How long will you remain in that state? The world offers nothing to a child of God. You can't get nothing in this world being a child of God. So if you're going to be a child of God, you need to be in Christ. You can't be a child of God and be in the world. You have to be in Christ because the world offers nothing to a child of God. No matter how much it hurts or how patient I have to be, I have learned I must remain. It may be hurting now, but God got a plan. It may be tough now, but God got some blessings down the way. And he never, ever, ever said it wasn't going to be no turbulence, but he always promised us a smooth landing. And as Christians, we have to remember that. We have to remember that. Last but not least, I want to talk about today the benefits of, of belonging, right? Because we looked at what happens when I leave and we show in this text that when you leave, number one, you take less than what you deserve. When you leave, number one, resources become scarce. When you leave, number one, you have to find yourself doing things that you have no business doing. Working jobs, you have no business working. Dating people, you have no business dating. Attending churches, you shouldn't even be in. When you leave Christ, you start making poor choices, right? Your decision making is skewed because your discernment is not high. You grieve the Holy Spirit. None, nothing good comes out of leaving Christ. It is a must that I abide. The benefits of belonging, the benefits of remaining. Watch this. When he came to his senses, Luke 15, 17 through 22, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your higher servants. So he went up, he got up and went to his father. Uh, the benefits of belonging, because I'm not here to beat down anybody. The benefits of belonging to Christ and, and, and you know, it means something to belong to Christ. You know how many people want to belong to something today in this world? You know how many people are searching for belonging? You cannot underestimate the belonging that you have. I belong to Jesus. 
I belong to him. I'm a part of this royal priesthood. I'm a part of this family. And one thing I know about family, sometimes it don't always work, but family got to always come back together. And what I love about this text is the prodigal son came to himself. You got to come to yourself. You got to come to your senses. You got to be able to take a slice of humble pie and repent. And you can always come back to Christ because he's not willing. God is not willing that any of us should perish. So you can always come back. One of the benefits of belonging to Christ is no matter how many times I fall, he will always welcome me back in. You cannot say the same thing about the world. When you fall one time in the world, they ostracize you. When you fall one time in the world, they write you off. When you fall one time in the world, they don't give you another shot. But I can fall seven times in Jesus Christ and I can get back up eight and he'll welcome me back with open arms. That's a benefit of belonging. You can't tell me where you can find that in the world. If you can find that in the world, I'll, I'll, I'll be there right behind you. But I've been there. I've been out there and I'm telling you, in Christ, it's nothing better. The prodigal son said, I'm going back. I'm going back to my father because he has servants who are eating better than me. How long will you live beneath your privileges because you choose to be impatient? How long will you live beneath your privileges because you're angry? And because you're tired, I got news for you. We all angry. We all tired. But you got to remain in Christ. And when you when, and let's say you step out of it, let's say you step out of Christ. You got to come to yourself and realize, listen, I got to go back. The Bible says, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him was filled with compassion. He ran his son threw his arms around him and he kissed him. The son said to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer to be worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe, put it on, put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf, kill it. Let's have a feast. Let's celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. And this is what I love about God. As long as I change my mind, he'll meet me halfway. The Bible says while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. And he was filled with compassion. He smelled like the pigs. He smelled dirty. He probably looked, he, he smelled bad. He looked dirty, right? But it didn't matter. His father came and wrapped his arms around him and, and he met him halfway. That's the kind of God we serve, church. When I make up my mind that I'm going back home to my father, he'll meet me halfway. And when he covers me, it's so that Satan won't have another opportunity to hit me with anything else. When he covers me, it's to show Satan that now he's home. Now he's mine. You can't touch him no more. Y'all ought to be shouting amen in here. His father told him, it don't matter where you've been. It don't matter what you've done. Bring out the fattest calf and kill it. Put a ring on his finger. Put some sandals on his feet. When he came back to his daddy, he ain't had no shoes. But but his daddy gave him some shoes. When he came back to his daddy, he had no jewelry on. But his daddy said, put some jewelry on him. And I'm telling you today, that's the same thing with God. You can be out there. You can be in the world. You can let him down. And you can come back and he can bless you with what you had. Just like it never happened. There's, a, there's so many benefits to belonging to Christ. There's so many benefits in Christ. That's why I got to abide. And even if I don't abide, I have to have enough sense to come to myself and say, <clears throat> I'm going back home. Somebody here today has not been faithful. Somebody here today has not been reading their word. Somebody here today has not been worshiping at all. You just you just let it all go. You just abandon it all. But listen, you can come back today and you can get the benefits that you had the whole time. God is not willing that any of us should perish. It's up to you today to make that decision. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to church. I'm coming back to worship. Somebody needs this today. I don't know what you were doing before you watched this. I don't know what you had planned this upcoming Sunday. But the Lord misses you. We miss you. You can come back because outside of Christ, what do you have? Outside of Christ, what, what, what can you lean on? Right? The prodigal son realized that outside of his father, 
There was nothing else. So he came back home. And his father blessed him with what he had like he never left. God is waiting to bless somebody the same way today. We're going to pray right now. That's the lesson. What happens when I leave? Nothing. <laughs> what happens when I leave? Nothing. What benefits do I get? None. But you can always come back. You can always come back. We're going to pray today. Somebody needs prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for always welcoming us back. Every time we've sinned, every time we've let you down, Lord, you've always been there with your arms outstretched waiting for us to come back. And so, Lord, we, we're praying right now for those who have, who have sinned and have fallen short. And, Lord, we ask that you welcome them back with open arms. Love them as though that they've never sinned. And, Lord, be with us. Be with all of us who are requesting prayer today, Lord. Some are requesting prayer for themselves. Some may be requesting prayer for health. Some may be requesting prayer for family members, Lord, and friends and, and household members and spouses. Lord, we need you to just look in our lives today and give us what we need for exactly what we need it for. Lord, we're coming back to you. It's hard out here and we know that we can't do it without you. Lord, we pray that this prayer makes it to you. And Lord, we pray that you answer it for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That's the lesson. That's the lesson today, y'all. Uh, the Cost to Abide, part two. Come on back next week. We're getting into part three. We're going to have about four or five parts of this series. I love you. May God bless you. And may he bless you real, real well. Dance my feet. I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy just thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy thinking about what he's done for me.